Oh yes, it's that time of year, it's the time when we've got to deal with the spiders that live under the car. I've got myself some things that are going to help me, and maybe some things that aren't going to help me. Let's do it! Warning. The warning on this video has been removed, and this video is highly educational. Okay, this is the sixth attempt of trying to get this video to be monetized. What has been happening is, when this video gets uploaded to YouTube, Within a minute, it gets demonetized and, well, basically it becomes a throwaway video. The chances of then being manually reviewed and passing uh, is going to be minimal. Now, I think I know where the trouble lies. One person gave me a clue in the closed captions and the way the robot sees what I say and interprets those words. I think it's the storm sequence. There's something I say in that storm sequence, which is a very common word said in Australia, but to people overseas and to the system, with my fingers in the air beside my head, it is quite a strong word. Maybe up the end of the video I'll spell the word out, but I think this is the word that is triggering the trouble. And I think it also triggered trouble in some other videos that I've done. I also feel that if they're screaming in a video, that is another thing that the system seems to cite as being a problem. Now, I know many people have had many things to say in what's going on with the demonetization system and what it interprets. It is interesting in a way, but it's also extremely boring and frustrating to deal with as a video producer. Let's see how we go this time around. It's a little bit like the film Groundhog Day. We're reliving the same thing over and over, but we're trying to work out uh, where did I make the mistake. The system which is pulling this video down, well, the big flaw with the system is it never tells you where the mistake is. I'd love to go to court with an argument against YouTube on that because I think I could argue a win, okay? Because... This is totally unfair in the way that we are treated because you're never told where the mistake lies in your video and this needs to be sorted out by YouTube. Hey, I keep telling them how bad this place is, but hey, they keep ignoring me. But hey, I've got quite used to that. It's almost comical in the way YouTube has been tripping over itself and there's been plenty of signals to indicate there's lots of trouble going on. First thing I grab is a torch and the neighbors have started to use a whipper slipper, but hey, that's how it works here. Oh yes, don't you love the sound of whipper slippers in the morning? This spider has set up at the back of my car here. I've got the torches there so we can see the web that's going down to the ground. Okay, coming down from that rear feature on the car, hopefully you can see going across frame there is uh, basically diagonal web. I'll try and get my finger in there to point it out. It's just here. Okay, I believe that's red back spider. And I'll try and point out the connection parts of the ground, but I really notice this because there's some danglies in the web uh, so often. I notice it because of the danglies. This is the area here where the drop down lines connect with the concrete floor. Lots of ants traverse through here and basically the ants get caught in the drop down line and the rest is history. This web setup is actually very tricky to see. It may not be red back, it might be one of those grey widow spiders. And if I take a look at this area here where the spider is set up, I can see a clue to maybe what spider this is. Right in the middle of the screen there is a spider skin there, so whatever spider is living here has grown up a bit, shed a skin and left it right there. Where the web comes up and connects to the car, this is a very recluse area in here. Anything could be going on inside there, so if I come in with a spider spray, uh, we may not see the spider, it may dart further into the car and recluse. I'm looking down underneath the feature there, uh, right in the middle of the screen there's a bit of spider web there, but really it's all dark and horrible up there, who knows what's living up there. I'm going to put some white card under the area where I'm going to spray, so if something drops down I'll get a better view of it. I've got this spray here, the Mortine Fast Knockdown, it's a top shelf stuff, kills in one spray, this can is nearly empty, and I've also got my favourite cheap spray, the good old Coles Multi Insect Killer. I'm going to come in with a reverse spray first, that is like coming from behind. Hopefully that will trick the spider. And I'll come in with a, uh, well, a blast like that. As you can hear, this can is almost empty now. Something might come running for its life. Or well, sometimes uh, absolutely nothing will happen. Uh, it can be like that. Okay, we've got the spider. We have got the spider. It's down on the ground there. It is about the size that I thought it would be. Let me see if I can get up closer to properly ID that one. Nasty. Okay, there is a spider there. Yes, that fast stuff works fast. Uh, can you tell what spider this, that is? I'll be able to tell more once I see it on the computer screen. It is, well, whatever it is, it is very immature. 
I'm thinking it's Redback. It's a very, I'm thinking it's a very young Redback. If I'm wrong, or you can tell me, maybe I can put a title up once I work out when I see a, a better look at that there. Let me just spin it around and oh, see the back of it. One thing about it is it's, um, it's very mature. Okay, I've got a little lens that gets in even closer. That is definitely a red back. I can just see the red back starting on the back of the spider. When they're mature and they're going between spidling to being an adult spider, uh, it can be very difficult to tell. The red is just starting to show. But sadly for this girl, guess what? It's good night, sister. Oh yeah. Oh, I've just wrecked my cardboard. Dang it. Yes, uh, sort of different, but in a funny way, sort of the same. The way these spiders operate, um, there's something about my cars that they really like, and very, very sinister the way it was set up in this recluse area here, but it was sort of nice to also see, going along here, the spider skin that is there. Maybe some of you realise what spider it was when you saw that spider skin. Okay, so we've dealt with the spider out of the car. There is a spider up at the front gate, and I'll just get all my goods and chattels here. Uh, work out how to turn the lights off and we'll go and deal with this next spider and I think the next spider I'll be using uh, a little bit of flame Before I head up to the front gate Let's take a look at the spider control chart here that made me understand how to control the redback spiders because I understand their breeding cycle This is uh, set to the Australian summer. So our summer is December January February as I'm making this video It's actually right here the first week of February. Okay, all the children are back at school now and seeing the size of the spider that I've just seen under the car tells me that maybe this is a very important time to do some spider control. So the spider we've just seen here, if I step back in time a bit, okay, well it would have been a spidling going back a month there. Okay, step back another, let's say, oh, six weeks or so. So it's probably come out of its egg sac back in November and it's got to the size that we saw uh, right at the beginning of February. Let's say if I let that spider live, it would keep feeding through March and April. We get into our what we call autumn, but I put fall here because the American friends would relate to that. The spiders lay dormant during June, July, and they come back to life, or oh, I say up mid to late August, and then the cycle just starts over again. It just never, ever stops. And once I got my head around the way these spiders operate and drew up this chart, I was able to give these spiders, well, basically a We've got a lot less redback spiders around our place now than, let's say, a couple of years back. Okay, let's take a look at front gate spider. It's sort of like front gate spider 2.0 because, well, being an adaptive critter and being able to basically change the environment to what they like, well, front gate spider is living down there. Yeah, so I walk past a spider every day called Jim Spider. Do you want to take a look at Jim Spider? She's been very active. She's caught lots of things. And she is a wonderful, wonderful thing. In fact, I think she wouldn't be that far off from laying egg sacs after getting into a giant cockroach. In fact, she's caught cicadas, oh, all sorts of things, black beetles, my crikey Charlies. She is an awesome wonder of nature. And it seems like that not many people see Jim Spider, but because I've got those redback spider eyes, I say hello to Jim Spider every morning I walk past her. She's awesome and she's breeding on. Let's give a shout out to Jim Spider. Maybe we can give her a name as well because, well, Jim Spider's sounding a little bit macho. Remember, she is a girl. Okay, well, looking down here, what I've done is I've actually fed the ants something sugary to bring the ants out. This is right on an ant nest area. And the redback spider has set up her nest in there. Okay, and if I draw back here slowly and I can go in and show you the spider who is actually feeding on something right now. Isn't she wonderful? Okay, there she's there. She's very small. She's uh, not that much different to the one that I saw underneath the car. She's feeding on something and I noticed her here just, well, basically a week ago. I've been keeping a very close eye on her and I think it's time to basically tidy her up, eh? At least she's going out with a full stomach. You might say, well that's a very small spider, very small redback spider, but you got to think forward. By next season that little spider won't be so little and it's going to be a breeder. I can also see one of her skins there. They shed the skin, that's the way these spiders grow. And maybe you recall that I used to get spiders underneath the control box here and I put the white lithium grease, heaps of it under there and it has stopped the spiders from sitting up there but I added some brickwork here and what I've done is basically created a new, like a new spider home. You can see leaves that she's put in there and there's an ant nest down here somewhere so it's like the perfect place for these spiders to set up. Well I'll clear my lights from here because I don't want to wreck them and I'll uh, basically turn this into a very unperfect home for Mrs. Spider. 
this thing is like a baby weed dragon look um, I think it's just good for doing little work like this okay it's on a, it has a nice clear flame like that but if I turn it upside down I can get it to be a bit nasty okay let's do it I'm sorry Mrs. Redbag uh, but it's a good nice sister uh, she can't run from that I can tell you and sorry to the ants as well I didn't mean to take you guys out with this flame in any war there's collateral damage and unfortunately yes some ants got caught up in this but don't worry they'll build their numbers up and in that ash pile there somewhere is uh, well Mrs. Redback Spider good night sister I can see the ants dealing with the wounded ants from my fire control they'll just become food for the ant colony the ants waste nothing and to say sorry to the ants I've got some nice sugary stuff here so they don't think I'm a giant meanie and I'll just put it in here and I'm sure that they'll latch onto this stuff really really fast oh yeah bring it on that'll feed up the colony oh it's amazing the difference that an hour can make the ants have come in they're having a lovely feed I hope they forgive me for the collateral damage that was caused in dealing with that redback spider nest hey but hey ants are survivors ants will basically be here forever and ants are totally amazing uh, bring on the ants I say bring them on bring them on well let's finish off and take a look at my pet redback spider called Bindi yay Bindi was named by a youtuber who's now going places while my channel gets destroyed there's Bindi the redback spider she is the last surviving spider in this spider tank there were thousands of redback spiders in here mainly spiderlings but there were also some adult spiders as well so Bindi is a survivor yeah it's quite curious what happens in the spider tank between let's say week 12 to week 16 there's like a great disaster that wipes out the population and I'm not exactly sure what causes it my crikeys I've just seen something rather remarkable is that a gonzo it's climbing the only bit of greenery which is in here I can't believe it if it is a gonzo is that a mark 3 gonzo because I think we've already had mark 2 it looks like a gonzo -y sort of thing well anyway well let's call it gonzo mark 3 eh wonderful to see how's it survived the spider tank I've got no idea thinking of survive as well as a giant woody or cockroach thing there I call them cockroaches you may call it something else whatever it is it's ginormous and it'll be a massive meal for Bindi the redback spider once you take a good look down the floor of the spider tank there it's actually totally alive with critters there were lots of things that I put in there over the many weeks the redback spiders were in here and uh, lots of those things have continued on and survived and looks like they've also bred up some great numbers I know you'll want a Gonzo update uh, Gonzo I think was attempting to fly and uh, I think that's what's going on there I think it's trying to plan an escape and Gonzos tend to be wired like that I've noticed but they always well tend to fail there's a lot of fail bugs in this tank and uh, well Gonzo Mark 3 is just another classic example Little did I know, on the day I made this video, there was another giant storm headed our way. This is not the hailstorm we had back in December, this is another one on top of that. Let me give you a sneak peek of this amazing, scary storm. This is one of these really, really bad summer storms, uh, like a tropical depression. So much rain is falling, there's a lot of lightning. The roof there is, it, it's just leaking water, I mean all our roofs are weakened. That's the garage where I've already had all the damage from the uh, other hailstorm that we had back in December. But man, this is just crazy. This is just crazy, crazy weather. Very scary. It's a very, very scary thing to watch. Woo! Are people still driving in there? Oh, oh are there people stopping? Oh, man. Okay, you got a feel for that storm. It was actually very scary. It's caused a stack more damage to the houses that were already ripped apart from the hailstorm we had back in December. There were trees down. It was just crazy. And one of the things I thought about after this storm was, what about poor old Mrs. Redback Drain Spider? Did she survive the storm? Well, this storm and what happened to Mrs. Redback Drain Spider will become upcoming videos. Do you think... Mrs. Redback Drain Spider could survive that savage storm. And I absolutely guarantee to you that very few people will answer that very simple question. 
Okie dokie, so with each re-edit of this video, uh, there's more beeps added to the video. I'm even scared to spell out the word because maybe the system can spell. Okay, I'm not going to spell out the word that I spoke about at the start of the video. Doing the version of the video with the reversed audio may be an epic fail because the system that's looking at what's being uploaded can see things when it's skewed around, when it's upside down, and I can't really discuss how that system works or else I'm going to get into a lot of trouble but it also may have interpreted some of those reverse words as problem words in other languages as strange and as stupid as that sounds. Because I did the very loose video where we took a look at the gym spiders and I used the same title, information, tags and thumbnail as this video will receive, it didn't get demonetized so I don't think that's a problem. Many people said to me that the problem lies in the title and the tags. I'm pretty sure they are clean. I think really the secret in all this is to go and look at the closed captions of the uploaded video. What I'll basically do, a very simple thing, is if it fails monetization again at upload, I'll put a comment up. My pinned comment will be, this video has failed monetization, and there are some people helping me out with this video who watch my videos, and they can come in and they can say, hey Leo, we've seen this word being said in whatever country they live in, because who knows what's being fed to people in different countries. The closed caption system, I think, is the way to work out what's going on. And I think what I was saying during the storm section of the video may have been misinterpreted or may have been a word that is a flagged word. But then again, as I said at the start of the video, you're never told where the problems lie. And this is an epic, epic fail by YouTube against the producers who are trying to make their most wondrous video site most amazing. It really is the most peculiar partnership that I've ever been in because it feels like that my partner, who is YouTube, is really my enemy.